the fundamentals of a charge pump circuit. Dive further into switched capacitor circuits by learning about charge pump circuits, what they are, how they work, their pros and cons, and their applications. What is a charge pump circuit? A charge pump circuit, or charge pump regulator, is a kind of DC-DC converter that leverages switched capacitor techniques to either increase or decrease an input voltage level. As shown in Figure 1, these circuit blocks generally consist of nothing but capacitors and switches, I-clock controlled field effect transistors, or FETs, and work by carefully timing and controlling these switches to exploit the charge transfer characteristics of capacitors. Discrete designs usually use diodes rather than transistors to implement the required switching operation. Through alternatively charging and discharging capacitors, a charge pump can increase or decrease a given input voltage to the desired level. From a lower level perspective, charge pump circuits work on the basic principle that the voltage across a capacitor cannot change instantaneously. As defined by the capacitor IV equation, in order for a capacitor to change its voltage instantaneously, it would require an infinite amount of current. Since this is not physically possible, we see that a capacitor cannot abruptly change the voltage across its terminals. Charge pumps work to exploit this behavior in order to manipulate the voltage across a capacitor through the use of carefully timed switches. Charge pump voltage doubler circuit example. To get a better understanding of how charge pumps work, we'll now look at a fundamental example, the voltage doubler circuit. As shown in figure two, our voltage doubler circuit consists of one single capacitor controlled by four surrounding switches. The operation of this circuit is in two phases, the gain phase and the common phase. In the gain phase, SW1 and SW2 are closed while SW3 and SW4 are open. As shown in figure three, in this phase, the positive and negative terminals of C1 are connected to VIN and GND respectively. As such, the capacitor is charged up until the voltage across its terminals is equal to VIN. Now with C1 charged to VIN, we switch to the common phase shown in figure four. In the common phase, SW1 and SW2 are open and SW3 and SW4 are closed. Here, the negative terminal of C1 is connected to VIN while the positive terminal is connected to VOUT. As established earlier, the voltage across a capacitor cannot immediately change. Because of this, the capacitor will try to maintain an equivalent voltage of VIN across itself. To maintain this VIN across itself, the capacitor forces the voltage of VOUT to be equal to 2 asterisk VIN, making the equivalent voltage across the capacitor equal to VIN. With the output voltage reference to the ground, the voltage doubler circuit effectively takes an input of VIN and creates an output voltage of 2 asterisk VIN.